it has been a pretty long time since I've done a presentation on stream. Um, I haven't felt like I've had necessarily the time to do that much prep work for stream, but I've changed my screen, uh, my schedule for YouTube, and I now post videos once every three days instead of once every two days, which might not sound like a big difference, but it's five less videos a month, which means a lot more time to make higher quality content, which means the return of AVNJ presentations and educations. So today we are going to be talking about why or are fish covered in slime? This is a, a fun topic, something you might have heard about. Anyone who has sort of like a surface level knowledge about fish in general will tell you that fish have some sort of slime thing. It's like one of those fun facts. Every one of those top 10 videos that we watch has that uh, like section where it's like, and this fish is covered in a layer of slime. All right. Now, there are some implications to having a layer of slime. This is something you've probably heard. You shouldn't hold fish. You'll rub off their protective mucus covering. This is even something that I believed at one point or another. Uh, and this is something like if you've been around an aquarium, uh, if you've been fishing, any person who has some sort of like, uh, I don't know, base knowledge of fish ethics or morality um, will repeat this to you, will tell you that rubbing off of the fish's coating by holding it is a bad thing and it exposes it to diseases and so forth. Um, and it's even something that I fully believed at one point or another. Um, and it is not something that I am immune to hearing about. In fact, I get comments like this on every single Avian Jays adventure, on all of my TikToks where I hold the fish. People are genuinely concerned about it. And I understand that some of these comments come from a place of, you know, concern and wanting to care about the fish, um, but some of them are just confidently stupid. So let's read some. Touching a fish like that damages its mucous membrane. Really bad for them. Please don't touch fish unless you intend to kill it. That's crazy. I thought that was for frogs and amphibians. Um, frogs and amphibians do also have a similar layer, but fish have their own mucous membrane. We'll talk about it. This comment is crazy to me. Touching a fish, you might as well kill it. What does this mean? <laughs> touching the fish is equivalent to death sentencing it that just because you slightly touch a fish or you hold a fish out of the water that its slime coat is going to deteriorate it's going to instantly get a disease and it's going to die a terrible death and so if you're going to touch it you might as well just kill it just leave them alone why take them out and touch their slime coat well, we were doing scientific research so that's why I take them out uh, in that particular video and touch their slime coat We'll talk about why that's stupid. Isn't it bad to directly touch certain fish like bettas? It could destroy their slime barrier or something. I appreciate this comment. This comment is fine. This person is inquisitive and doesn't know the answer. We'll learn about whether it's bad to touch them or not. WTF is fishes. Also, you're destroying the fish's slime coat by handling them, which increases the chance for them to get sick. No thanks. This is a very confidently stupid comment. And you know here on the AVNJ channel, we love people who are confidently stupid because they're fun to make fun of. Uh, no, just by handling the fish, you are not destroying its slime coat. And it does not increase the chance for them to get sick. And that's not even talking about the WTF is fishes, which is a whole separate issue. So let's talk about the science. First of all, the one thing that they got right Fish skin mucus provides a stable physical or chemical barrier against the invading pathogens. In fish, the epithelial surfaces are covered by a slimy, slippery layer called the mucus. All right. N fish are covered by a mucus layer, and that mucus layer does help them protect against pathogens. However, there is no evidence. You can't find a scientific paper that says that holding them or even rubbing them, rubs the slime off, rubs the mucus off. Uh, and especially when the holding is gentle. None of my videos am I taking fish out of the water and fucking scraping down their side or whatever. In that case, maybe you would have some kind of, I don't know, some kind of basis for saying that I could be hurting the slime coating, but that's not what I'm doing. I literally just pick the fish up out of the water, hold it in my hand. And maybe you have an argument for shock and, you know, keeping the fish safe uh, out of the water for too long. Dry hands could rub off their mucus layer, right? I heard you need to wet your hands before you touch a fish. 
That's all just myths. <laughs> There's no scientific evidence that whether your hand is dry or wet, that you're going to rub off the mucus layer of a fish. And even if you could, let's assume worst case scenario for a second. Let's assume just barely touching the fish's mucus layer destroys it. You know, you get rid of the mucus layer entirely. You rub it off completely. All right. Let's read the second part. It serves as an important component of innate immune mechanism in two ways. Firstly, by producing continuously and being sloughed off regularly, it prevents the adherence of pathogens and stable colonization of potential infectious microbes. Meaning that the slime is being produced constantly, non-stop. The slime isn't something... Understood. Lick hands before touching fish. Got it. It's not what I said. Don't lick your hands before touching fish. It does not matter. It means that the slime is being produced constantly and coming off constantly. You are not doing damage, even if you were capable of rubbing it off, which there's no scientific evidence that you are. What you're essentially doing is capturing dam outflow in a little green pail meant to build sand castles at the beach. It's constantly cycling. You're not doing any damage by rubbing off or taking out that tiny little bit of water flowing out of the dam. They're constantly cycling out new mucus because the whole point of the mucus layer is to prevent a pathogen from being able to latch on. <clears throat> so the conclusion, fish are impressively good at resisting pathogens, especially considering how primitive their immune systems are. Fish are like in the term, you know, we don't think about it much. We take it for granted. But a lot of the really good developments in immune system and immunology came later in the evolutionary tree. You know, mammals would got a lot of this uh, very good immune stuff. We have a lot of stuff in our immune system that fish just don't have because evolution gave it to us just a little bit later. So considering how primitive their immune systems are, they're really like not very susceptible to diseases. Fish diseases and parasites are not that abundant um, in comparison into mammalian <clears throat> and other similar things. So a person touching the fish, especially non-violently, just lightly lifting it out of the water, like I said, there's a separate argument for shock, and I always take that into account. But just lifting the fish out of the water non-violently is not a worthwhile concern. So, now that that's cleared up, let's talk about some fun facts. Like, did you know that parrotfish sleep in a bubble of mucus? Yes, they literally blow a bubble of mucus like you or I would blow a bubble gum and then get inside of it and go to sleep. This is a common one you've probably heard about. Yes, parrotfish literally sleep in a bubble of protective mucus. This is different from the mucus that coats their skin like many other fish. Yes, they do also shit coral. That is another fun fact. But yes, they sleep in a bubble of slime. Another fun fact, have you heard of hagfish? Well, hagfish don't just have a slime coating. Hagfish have a slime defense system, and they can produce slime. I hate parrotfish, and this just adds to the argument. Worst fish. I love parrotfish. Hagfish produce a thick slime that is actually being utilized to produce bulletproof vests because it is so strongly woven and thick that no human material can really compete with how amazing it is. So, when you have a bunch of hagfish in your car, you know, you're transporting live hagfish specimens, and then you get into a crash, uh, this happens. <laughs> you thought the fish that you were picking up locally was a, a little slimy? This took weeks to clean up. All of that slime that you're seeing is the strength of bulletproof vests. <laughs> you have no idea how much time and effort this took to clean up. <laughs> this is what happens when the hagfish are uh, stressed out on land. <laughs> yeah, this was a fun news story. I remember reading about this. Everyone's just baffled as what the hell to do. All right. That is all that I have for that presentation. <clears throat> I need some water and throat clearing because I can't like speak right now. How often do you transport a car full of hagfish? <laughs> Not often. I don't, I've never done it. We don't have, well, we do have hagfish, but they're ocean. So I wouldn't work with them because I work with freshwater fish.